So if you're looking at the F-150 Lightning and you're wondering if it'll work for you, especially in terms of off-road uh, capability, uh, this video will be for you, so stay tuned. Um, I do have a reservation or a, a pre-order for the Lightning. Uh, I got that as soon as the order banks opened up during the presentation. So if I do end up going through with this order, I'll be doing a video on the ordering, um, when it arrives, uh, follow-up videos and stuff like that. So make sure to like and subscribe. I also do Ranger videos because I have a Ranger right now. Um, so. This video, like I said, it's going to be going over the off-road capability and kind of it, just my analysis about whether or not it'll work for me. Um, right now I have a 2019 Ford Ranger. It's a 4x4 um, FX4. Uh, it's not the most off-roady truck, but it does uh, pretty well and it's uh, a pretty capable um, truck. It's not a Jeep or anything, but so far it's gotten me to where I want to go. So. so if I move on to the Lightning, I want to make sure at least I'm in the ballpark of the current truck I have. Um, I'm not doing, like I said, I'm not doing anything crazy off-roading. I do uh, forest roads. Um, sometimes they get kind of rough, especially here in the Northwest, and especially at the beginning of the season after um, there's been snow up there all year. Uh, it can be kind of uh, a, bit, a bit dicey. So it's pretty important to me that the um, F-150 Lightning can at least get me to the trails I want to be on. And it would get me to the hiking trails, campsites, uh, I do a lot of dispersed camping, so uh, it has to at least meet that uh, criteria. So I have some kind of, a, let's see, I have like six or seven uh, kind of base spec points here that I'm going to be comparing. Uh, I'll put this up at the bottom of the screen, and I'll go over a couple of different points about um, the implications of some of the um, F-150 Lightning's specs and how they'll um, kind of impact the off-road performance of that. So. The four cars I'll have listed at the bottom, um, I'll explain that. I have the Lightning, I have the 2021 uh, F-150 Super Crew, so it's pretty much like the gas equivalent um, with the 5.5 uh, foot bed and also the 4x4. Um, I have the Ranger Super Crew, which is the one I have now, so that's kind of my baseline. And then also I have a Subaru Crosstrek because uh, in terms of the trails and the capability I need, I would say the Crosstrek is the absolute minimum just because my go places. I do tend to see uh, cross tracks at these trailheads, so I know at least a cross head can uh, a cross track can get to a lot of these places. So, uh, not many people are going to be cross shopping a lightning and a cross track. Uh, I realize that, but that's the reasoning for including that in this table. So, a couple of things. I have a kind of a list of things here. Um, just to start, the lightning does have a lot of torque. It does have um, good power. I don't think that'll be a big um, it probably will have an advantage over the gasoline Fords. Um, we don't know how it's going to translate into actual 4x4 performance because it likely won't be a true 4x4. Uh, it's going to have, the, I think it's a dual motor system and it's not going to have uh, probably real locking differentials but we've seen on Tesla that they do pretty well when they have these independent electric um, motor systems so it's something we're going to have to wait for to see. Um, I don't think that's going to be a limiting factor on the um, F-150 Lightning's off-road capability but it's um, something to keep in mind. Either way, I think the power is good. Um, we'll see how that translates into um, working on things like snow and mud and things like that. Um, the next thing I want to point out is the low ground clearance. As you can see from the table below, um, the F-150 Lightning kind of is comparable to the Ranger I have now. It has about nine inches of ground clearance. It's less than the normal F-150, um, but it's more than a cross track. Uh, it could be better. I would actually like if it was a little bit higher just because the truck is longer and wider um, and the wheelbase is uh, further apart than my current Rangers. So that lower ground clearance will be more impactful than it is on uh, a truck or a vehicle with a shorter wheelbase. Um, and you can see that with the breakover angle. It has the worst breakover angle of the vehicles lift, uh, listed here and that's probably implication of the um, that, that ground clearance. So the breakover angle is kind of the angle that the truck can drive over or a vehicle could drive over. Um, so if you're going over like this, it's this angle here. So I'll put up a prior graphic that will kind of display that better, better kind of going over approach angle, uh, departure angle, and the breakover. But yeah, so the breakover angle is not great and it looks like it's going to be the worst one of the F-150s as far as the 4x4 F-150s go. And since we're on this uh, subject of approach and departure and breakover angles, um, the angle of approach actually surprisingly is better than the normal F-150. 
Um, I had expected it to be worse because of the aerodynamic, um, uh, I guess, front bumper and the kind of the styling they have on the front, but apparently that manifested as a better brake over angle. So, or not brake, sorry, angle of approach. So it does have a better angle of approach and that's the angle when you're approaching um, a hill or something like that. It's like the, angle, the maximum angle you can um, drive up to without impacting the front of the truck. So that's better than the normal F-150. It's not as good as the Ranger that I have now and uh, it is better than the Crosstrek. The Crosstrek has a pretty horrible um, approach angle. Uh, the angle of departure also, it's a little bit wor worse than the Ranger and the uh, gasoline F-150, but not by too much, so I don't think uh, in real world use that will be much of an issue. And yeah, besides that, there's not not too much too much interesting stuff in, uh, besides that uh, lower ramp uh, breakover angle. Everything else is about in line with the gasoline one. Minus the ground clearance. So, the going on, um, I think the thing that sticks out the most as being the most different from the normal F-150 is uh, the base curb weight. So this includes the fuel, if it's uh, we're talking about the gasoline versions of these vehicles. And um, by far the Lightning is the most heavy vehicle on this list. Um, it's even heavier than the Raptor with the 37 package, which is the heaviest F-150 uh, crew cab with the 5.5 foot bed. Um, it's a good 600 pounds heavier than the heaviest uh, F-150. Most of them average around 5,200 um, pounds and this is 6,500 which is like kind of you're almost getting into uh, um, super duty uh, weight there. So um, we're looking at something the size of F-150 but with the weight of a, um, a super duty truck. Uh, and that's not great when you're off road because more weight um, will translate to more issues in soft terrain, so mud, um, loose gravel, uh, snow. Uh, you kind of want less weight so you can kind of float along the top of these things and not dig in. Um, that's honestly the thing I'm most worried about is that, that weight, especially with the Ranger I have now. This is a full 2,000 pounds uh, heavier, which is almost a small car. So that's, uh, I'll be looking forward to kind of more um, hands-on videos. Hopefully people will be doing those and kind of talking more about how this weight translate to, translates to handling and things like that. Um, it's going to hurt traction, of course. Um, well, actually it won't, it'll, it won't hurt traction on solid ground because uh, more weight will mean it has more um, kind of more grip since it's pressing down hard on the ground, but on loose things, uh, that's not going to um, translate well. Uh, but as far as it's going to probably impact the braking, um, trying to descend down hills slowly, trying to go up hills, and going further onto that, um, kind of a similar thing is we can start talking about the tires. Um, a lot of the electric vehicles, they have a tire that's uh, kind of tuned for better uh, rolling resistance. That's why you see a lot of electric cars with the uh, thinner wheels. And I expect we'll see at least a special tire uh, combo for the F-150 Lightning that will be tuned specifically for range and not off-road capability. So with that, I expect we're gonna have a worse tire performance compared to the factory tires that come from something like a normal factory uh, F-150. And uh, that's going to translate into worse off-road um, capability. So that uh, combined with the big weight increase is gonna hurt uh, your traction off-road and it's just gonna make it more likely to get, uh, to sink into soft ground and have trouble getting out of that. So that's kind of an issue there. We'll see, I guess, how that works out. I'm, I don't think they've announced what tires are gonna be coming from the factory. Of course, you can upgrade those. Uh, the problem is once you upgrade those, you probably will have some impact on your the range. And with these electric vehicles, uh, given if you're, trying, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, there might not be charging stations nearby. So you have to take that into consideration whenever you do anything uh, that's gonna affect the range. So going on, uh, since we're talking about range, uh, the best case fuel range, um, the F-150 Lightning, we saw 300. Uh, we're seeing a lot of first impressions of people look at these and seeing that it's actually looks like it's possible to be around 400, uh, best case. 
Uh, the best case for the F-150 is 700, that's with the hybrid and the extended range gas tank. Uh, my Ranger gets about 400 miles, and the Subaru Crosstrek is also about 400 miles. So that's not a big change from what I have now. Uh, the problem being that I can't just stop at a gas station in the middle of nowhere um, to fill up with the, the lightning. So another thing that's going to impact uh, range, especially if you're thinking about doing off-road stuff, a big thing right now is like rooftop tents. Um, those do impact your MPG, so it will also impact the range of the vehicle. That's just something to keep in mind if you're looking at getting a truck and getting a rooftop tent and that going that route for overlanding and things like that. Um, as far as good, uh, Ford has commented that the bottom will be shield, have skid plates. Uh, in general, it looks like it's a little bit more durable because there's less exposed things at the bottom of the truck compared to a normal F-150, like the exhaust, um, fuel lines, fuel tank, uh, things like that. But you'll have a battery under there. They said it's um, shielded, and we'll see how that translates into real, uh, real world use. It probably will be a lot more expensive to fix something if it's damaged under the truck with the Lightning than it will be with the equivalent uh, gas F-150. Uh, positive side is the trunk, or the frunk, um, on the F-150 Lightning provides a lot more uh, weatherproof storage compared to a normal truck. Um, normally you just have to deal with a tonneau cover on the back if you want to get some uh, something that's safe from the elements and you want to store things. Um, with the F-150 Lightning, you have the additional space in the front, so that will come in handy if you're camping and transporting things. I've seen videos where they also say you can use as ice chest, so if you're out uh, in the middle of nowhere, I mean, you can just load your uh, camping food in there and use that. As far as like the overall picture, like how this looks, it looks like it's not going to be too far off from my Ranger in terms of uh, off-road performance. It's, it, looks, it is going to be a downgrade uh, from everything I've seen. Uh, but I don't think it'll be a problem getting me to the trails and um, kind of the camping spots and things I usually go to. Uh, I mostly, honestly, I think the biggest thing here is the weight um, and the tires. I'm not going to want to switch out tires for off-road use and just daily driving. So I'm going to end up going with something that's better for commuting and daily driving um, just because I need that range. Uh, it's fairly common that if I'll go on a day drive for around 200 miles. Uh, we don't know what the range is going to look like if you're spending a lot of the time off-road on a trail. And I want a good buffer from in the middle of nowhere, uh, especially because we don't really know how, um, well, I guess I can't say we, but someone like myself who hasn't owned an electric vehicle for several years, I don't know what the charger uh, situation is, and I'm not going to really be pushing it at the start, especially when there is not much charging infrastructure kind of uh, in more remote areas. So we'll see how that works out. Right now, I think I'm still on board in terms of uh, buying a Lightning. I think it will meet my requirements as far as off-road stuff. But we'll see. I'm hoping there's more first impressions about um, covering uh, actual use of this off-road and not just uh, hypothetical things like I'm doing right here in this video. But uh, let me know if you're planning on buying a Lightning, if you're concerned about the off-road use, uh, what you're driving now, and what you'll be, I guess, coming from. And uh, is there anything you think I missed? Is there any other points you think that are going to be a big deal off-road? Uh, if so, make sure to comment. Uh, I like talking with everyone in the comments. So uh, that's it for today. Hope, uh, yeah, I don't know, that's it.